Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining PBC on Fox. Your host for today is Brittany Guzan. Please go ahead. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on this call. On behalf of TGB Promotions, we are very excited to be back on Fox Primetime and promoting this highly anticipated, long-awaited rematch. On this call today, we have the co-main and main event. And before I turn it over to Ray Flores, who will introduce the fighters, I wanted to remind everyone that tickets are still available. They're starting at $27. And also, we will be hosting a special fan fest beginning at 2.30 p.m. for any ticketed fan. There will be live music, food, and fun, and most importantly, a Corona beer garden. I'm looking forward to seeing all of the L.A. boxing fans out there, and we'll now turn it over to the voice of TGB Promotions, Ray Flores. Thank you very much, Brittany. We have an outstanding card from top to bottom. It is an honor and a pleasure. It is fight week. It is at the StubHub Center in Carson, California, PBC, live on Fox and Fox Sports at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific. We have a tremendous triple header for all of you this Saturday. When you're talking about it on social media, use the hashtag PBC on Fox. Tickets are going very quickly. This fight is selling unbelievable. Our televised opener features three division world champion Fernando Cochulito Montiel against the unbeaten Mexican brawler Jorge Lara. This is going to be a battle in the featherweight division's 10-round schedule. The co-feature, we have another battle. It is going to be a lot heavyweight slugfest featuring Edwin La Bomba Rodriguez colliding against Thomas Top Dog Williams. And then in the main event, five years in the making, it happens this Saturday, PBC on Fox and Fox Deport is a vicious Victor Ortiz squares off with Andre the Beast Berto. This is a fight that is without question going to be a barn burner. Now let's talk about one of our feature bouts of the evening, fighting out of Fort Washington, Maryland, most recently having picked up two victories, including a second-round TKO over world-ranked contender Humberto Savigny last November. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Thomas Top Dog Williams, Jr. Hey, how you doing today? Thomas, if you want to give a couple opening remarks. Uh, yeah, man. Um, I'm just ready to go. You know, uh, it's been a good training camp. Um, long training camp. You know, this fight was originally scheduled for March the 12th in Connecticut. You know, um, we had to simmer down a little bit, you know, uh, because we were right on schedule and then bring it down and then bring it back up. And now we're, we're here on April 30th and we're just ready to go. Thank you very much, Thomas. We are excited to watch you fight against this man as he is born in the Dominican Republic, now fighting out of Worcester, Massachusetts. His only loss came at the hands of Andre Ward back in 2013. He's coming off of a fight of the year candidate last November against Michael Seals. What a matchup that was. It certainly provided a lot of ebbs and flows and highs and lows in the course of the matchup. Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Edwin La Bomba Rodriguez. Hey, thank you for having me. Um, you know, I'm I'm happy to be back fighting in um, California. Um, you know, I'm excited. I had a really good training camp, and um, you know, Thomas is a good fighter. Uh, he seems to have a good camp, so um, this is going to be a great fight. You know, two uh, top con- contenders going at it uh, to try to fight to get a world title fight, and um, you know, the fans can't go wrong in this fight. I completely agree with Edwin that the fans cannot go wrong with this fight. At this time, we are going to open it up for questions by the media. If you want to ask both Thomas Williams and Edwin Rodriguez questions, feel free to go ahead and do so. We will have the operator opening up for questioning by the media. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions at this time, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, if you have any questions at this time, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. And I'm waiting for callers to join the queue. Our first question is going to come from Lim Satterfield from PBC Fox. Please go ahead. Hi, how you doing? Hey, what's up, Glenn? Hey. Okay, so um, both of you guys are really uh, stoked up for this fight. 
You're both exciting. You're both on the same card. We talked about this the last time. Um, and you both want to kind of reel in and balance out uh, your attack in the fight. But given that you both were highly publicized and everyone saw you, um, both have knocked down, dragged out, out fights, and that Adonis Stevenson has come out and said that this is an audition to fight him. I want to ask both of you, how exciting does this fight stand to be, given your styles and what is at stake? First, Thomas Williams, can you answer that question? Um, honestly, uh, this fight will be exciting whether Adonis Stevenson said that or not. I think it's uh, I think it's great for the light heavyweight division to have two top light heavyweights fighting each other, uh, both of them at the top of the game, both coming off exciting wins. Um, this, this, this fight is going to be a fight for, to be talked about for a while. I think it's a very important fight, an exciting fight, whether the winner fights Adonis Stevenson or not. Either way, it puts the winner into a top position in, inside the light heavyweight division. Edwin? Um, you know, I agree with Thomas. I think that at this point, uh, Donna Stevenson is irrelevant. Um, you know, talk about whatever will be next after, you know, this fight. But this fight itself, um, based on, on his uh, contention in the fight, the type of fight he's been in, the type of fights I've been in, uh, the type of skills we bring to the uh, table, I, I think that um, that's enough to, for the fans to see that this is this is a great fight between two warriors that, we put everything in the line. Um, you know, I've been fighting for about seven, eight years as a professional to score a world title, and that has always been the main the main goal. But um, you know, without getting past um, Thomas Williams, there is no Adonis Stevenson or any other title. So uh, my main focus is going in there and, and um, you know being the best that I can be that night. The last question is: Given all the talk. Um, about potential fights between Stevenson and Kovalev, how important is it for two guys to inject some other excitement, a diversion for other for fans to talk about, uh, given that the fans have already seen both of you? Um, how important is it to for you guys to to add a different narrative to the division, Thomas and then Edwin? Um, well, I think just, uh, just, I mean, Stevenson is not that exciting to me, you know, um, I think, uh, as individuals, uh, my style is, uh, more exciting, and and my style is more exciting than Donna Stevenson, so I think we already pretty much separated ourselves from that, you know, uh, Stevenson and Kovalev, they're the champions, but, um, I don't think their styles are exciting, uh. I just think uh, me and Edwin Styles are a little bit better than there, honestly. Edwin? Um, screw Stevenson, screw Kovalev. I'm just looking forward to playing a good performance against Thomas Williams. Guys, thank you very much, and good luck this weekend. Hey, thank you. Uh, appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if if you have any questions at this time, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, ladies and gentlemen, our next question is going to come from Eddie Goldman from No Holds Bar. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everybody. Both you guys seem to be in a similar position, sort of one good win away from a title shot. Uh, maybe you could talk about that because instead of fighting somebody that you would be a huge favorite over. You're, you're fighting each other. So maybe you could tell us, I guess, Edwin first, why you think you're going to be able to win this fight and get that title shot. Uh, you know, I I believe I had a really good training camp. Um, you know, be working against a soft spot. Um, but uh, fighting for a world title, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a dream and a goal come true, not just fighting for it, but winning it. Um, and uh, Thomas Williams is in my way. I worked extremely hard in this training camp to um, get him out of the way. Um, Got to put the, the game plan together Friday night. 
What do you think your advantages are over him coming into this fight? Um, you know, I, I'm a little bit more seasoned. I have more pro fights. I have fought better uh, opposition. Um, you know, I have wins against uh, undefeated fighters. And, um, you know, guys like himself with the one loss. And, um, you know, I just got to put it in together. I think I've, I've been there. I uh, have more rounds. Okay, hey. and talk. Go ahead. Oh, no, I said that's it. Okay, thanks. And Thomas, also, why do you think you're going to be able to win this fight and earn a title shot? Um, mainly because, man, I've just been doing this my whole life. I've never did any other sport. Uh, I came into the boxing gym at the age of five years old. My dad was a top professional. You know, uh, I've been doing this. You know, I was sparring with world champions, William Joppy, um, Sean Bay Mitchell, world champions from Washington, D.C. at the age of 12 and 13 years old. Man, I'm, I might not have I might not have the fights, but I've been doing this my whole life, long as I can remember. And I just think um, I've just been around it, and I and I and I, I got the experience, the amateur experience, you know, uh, just being around the game and just being in boxing all of my life. I've never did anything else, no other sport but boxing, and I think that actually be a big key for fight night. <clears throat> all right, uh, thank you, and good luck to everybody in the fight. All right, thank you, hey guys. I'd like to add, um, ask something to both Thomas and uh, and Edwin. This is PBC on Fox. This is a huge stage for both. Also, it's at StubHub Center. And gentlemen, you guys are you know follow the game a lot, and you know that the StubHub Center has had so many amazing fights in that venue. For both of you, what is the significance fighting on Fox and at StubHub Center? Um, for me, um, you know, going back to the Stub Hub Center, I fought there before, great atmosphere. Um, you know, and, and you know, being on uh P V C on Fox is huge, you know, especially being part of this um big car with Berto versus Ortiz, who the first fight was um it was a war, you know, so I'm looking forward and, and I'm just happy to be part of that as well. Um, you know, with Th- Thomas, uh who's a fighter who you know, brings a lot of pressure and, and is on those type of fights as myself. Um, it's going to be a great night for the fans, man. It just it just can't go wrong. Thomas. Uh, yeah. Um, I've uh, always seen fights at Stub Hub, like when uh, Paul Williams fought for the uh, Antonio Margarito for the title. Um, he beat Margarito for the title there, and that was a war. You know, StubHub is known for, like, having awards, you know. Um, and they kind of built this card for brawlers and people that are excited. Uh, Berto Ortiz, me and Edwin, and then we have uh, Phil Jackson from D.C. against uh, David Benavidez. Those are going to be exciting fights. You know, um, fighting on Fox, you know, uh, it's, that platform is going to be huge. You know, uh, I think it has, like, so many viewers and everything. and um, Man, it's definitely going to be a great atmosphere, and I'm I'm just ready to go. Thank you, guys. Our next question comes from Mark Kriegel from Fox. Please go ahead. Hey, fellas. How are you? Um, We're doing great. Thank you, Mark. That's good. First question, do either of you, especially given the last item, do either of you expect this to go the distance? Uh, hell no. I don't, he doesn't I don't think nobody expected to go to Disney. <laughs> okay. Uh, now we got that out of the way. Um, I'm wondering, especially since Edwin first, you're, you're fighting a southpaw, if that changes anything up for you, if it makes your right hand more important. What? I'm asking you to reveal something here. I'm hoping it'll accommodate me somewhat. But what's the what's your most potent weapon? Again, Thomas, and, and Thomas, if you could um, address that regarding Edwin, if you could meet uh, me halfway. You know, uh, what you should know, they be most concerned about? What should the other guy be most? concerned about? I know, you know, just fighting a softball. Um, you know, uh, it's a whole. It's, it's different. You know, everything is different. So that uh, I was happy to have a, a long camp. Um, you know, because fighting a softball, there was things that we needed to work on. 
Um, it's a whole different style, you know. I don't want to get into details, but um, mm-hmm. you know, it's just a whole different style, different game plan, and um, you know, it's easier for them because they always fight uh, right-handed. We don't fight that many southpaws, but um, you know, I feel comfortable. I know that um, I had I never had any issues with with southpaws. Um, so I'm just excited to get this fight, and, and actually, I I like to thank uh, Thomas Williams because. He was the one that came out and, um, you know, called my name and he wanted this fight. Um, you know, I got to thank him because without uh, fighting a, a guy like Thomas who has a name in boxing and been on TV a few times, um, you know, my career, I wouldn't be able to keep moving up because I kept getting these guys that were undefeated, but nobody really knew anything about them. Um, so um, I think that fighting a guy like Thomas with, a, you know, people know who he is, and I think it will put that nail in the coffin for me to get a world title fight. Does the right hand become more important? I mean, you got power in both hands, but in a scenario like this, does the right hand become more important? Um, I don't think so. I don't think okay. so. I think that the jab is just as important as the right hand in this fight, you know. Okay. Thomas? First, first thing I want to say, I want to um, – and, and when I seen Edwin, I was going to ask him about this. I never once called his name. Actually, when the fight was brought to me, they told me Edwin wanted to fight me. So I was like, shit, like, damn, like, okay, cool, we can fight. So they brought it to me like Edwin wanted to fight me. When in actuality, they probably told him I wanted to fight him. When in actuality, they didn't even have to do all that. All they had to do was tell us, hey, we think it's a good idea. You guys fight each other. And we both fought it. would have been like, all right, cool. But I never, they called me and told me everyone wanted to fight me. Oh, and I accepted it, but I never I guess, called. I guess, I, I guess it was set up for a good fight. I, I, I like it. Let's get it on. But how are you going to knock him out? You know. <laughs> what do you say? How are you going to knock him out then? Hey, who, who, say, what, say it one more time. How are you going to knock him out then? Man, pay pay attention to the fight. I can't I can't sell it over the phone. <laughs> All you gotta do, but 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 I just but see but see I, I I'm a man, you know what I mean. I believe in if I say something, I stick by it. If I didn't, I'm gonna stick by it. So I just want him to know that as being a man, and you know that I didn't call him out. They told me he wanted to fight me. You know what I mean? And 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 and, and it's over. But that's all I wanted to say. But. But me fighting the right hand in the fight, I've been fighting the right hand in the fighters my whole life. You know, we don't usually run up against southpaw against southpaw. And usually, if it is, it's pretty much easy work. You know, uh, but fighting the right hand in the fighter, that's going to be nothing. You know, I've been fighting right hand in the fighters my whole life. All right. All right. Thanks, fellas. You are okay, cool. by the way. <laughs> And the final question from this group comes from Jake Donovan from the boxing dot com. Please go ahead. Uh oh. Uh oh, Jake Donovan, Jake, baby. What's going on? Hey, calm down. What's happening? What's up, guys? Hey, I just wanted to ask. Um, Gary Russell was supposed to be on the same March twelfth show as you guys, and he said that um the delay actually helped him. Really okay. So I just wanted to know if um if you guys are kind of in the same boat, where you know you know you were supposed to fight in March, although there was a lot of uncertainty. If actually pushing the fight back to April 30th has benefited either of you either way. Edwin, if you go first, and then uh, it's off What did you say? Um, I think it did. I think it has, um, you know, um, because of that push, I was able to get good work with uh, Marcus Brown, uh, Shaw Dawson. Oh. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's, that's the type of work I needed for this fight. So I think it actually did help me in that case. Cool. Thomas? Um... Yeah, of course. Whenever you have more time to train, it's always a benefit. I don't, I don't really believe it was a actually negative thing. I think it was actually positive, and that probably makes for a better fight, honestly. All right, cool. And then um, I know both of you, you know, you just kind of shared the details of how this fight came about. But were either of you on each other's radar even before you appeared on the same show last November? Uh, um, not a mind. Um. I go ahead. No, I mean, not really. I mean, being a fighter, everybody who's ranked in, like, I guess, for me, anybody who's ranked in front of me or in the top ten is pretty much on my radar. It's not really 
anything just ever personally, you know what I mean? It, 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 we're fighters. If we were firemen, we'd put on fires. If we were doctors, we'd save we're, we're, uh, lives, you know what I mean? But we're fighters, so it is what it is. Man, did you just quote your your uh, your boy, uh, Teddy Alice? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're not firemen. We're fucking boxers. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> Uh, Evan, do you have an answer? Uh, you know, in, in my in my case, um, you know, uh, ever after uh, the Andrew Ward fight, um, I just been uh, working my way to get back on title contention. I, I felt like I already been ready. Um, so no, I've been looking for a world title fight. Um, you know, Thomas didn't have that, so I, I was never really looking at him uh, or anything like that. But I'm happy this fight got made. Uh, two tough contenders going at it. Um, you know, so it's a great fight. I'm excited. Let's get it on. All right, definitely. Well, thank you very much. Uh, well, very much. Really looking forward to this fight on Saturday night. All, All right, take it easy. All right, guys, at this time, if we can have some final comments from both Thomas Williams and Edwin La Bomba de Rodriguez as we get ready for our main event. But, Thomas, if you can go ahead, if you want any final comments as you get set for your collision on Saturday night, PBC on Fox, promoted by TGB Promotions, Stub Up Center, Carson, California, live on Fox and Fox Deported this time. It's final comments. Um, man, pay attention. This is going to be a great fight. You know, uh, go to the bathroom, get your popcorn, get your food and everything. Change the kids. Put the kids to sleep. Do what you got to do because, man, you might get up and go to the bathroom. might be over. It's definitely going to be final work, so I'm definitely looking forward to, to the card. Edwin? I have lots of things. Uh, Goosen Promotion, Ms. Goosen, Lou DeBella. Uh, our team, and of course, my trainer, Ronnie Shields, uh, everybody that has helped me uh, in this training camp. Um, you know, we're ready. We're putting in a great show. Let's get it on. And thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Really appreciate it. Again, that was Thomas Williams and Edwin Labomba Rodriguez. They are going to be one of the featured bouts of the evening. Now let's get ready for our main event. It is PBC on Fox and Fox Deportes is promoted by TGB Promotions. This fight has been marinating for five years. The rematch is finally taking place, and what a battle it is going to be. An epic fight in 2011, and we expect another epic matchup this Saturday at Stop Hub Center. Tickets still available. Make sure to get them quickly, AXS.com. They are going fast. Let's bring in a gentleman from Winter Haven, Florida, coming off of fighting the now-retired Floyd Mayweather. He was amazing in his PBC debut. What a thriller he had last March when he stopped Jose Cito Lopez in the sixth round of their welterweight showdown. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a throwback fighter, a guy who always takes on any and all comers. Here is Andre Berto. Yo, 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 yo. What's happening? You want to have a couple quick comments real quick, Andre, as we get ready to uh, talk to your opponent as well? Uh, I don't really got too much to say. I mean, you know, let's get this thing on and on. Got to get it here to the gym. <laughs> All right, Andre. I know he's looking forward to his matchup. Let's bring in your adversary, originally from Kansas City. Now he calls Ventura, California, his home. He came back to the ring back in December. In San Antonio, he was able to stop Alberto Sanchez Leon. Again, another throwback fighter. He's willing to take on anybody and everybody, much like his opponent. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the charismatic, vicious Victor Ortiz. Hey, how you guys doing? Yeah. If you have any couple of opening comments real quick, and then we will open it up for questions. Nah, you know what, uh, I know Berto's been uh, putting in work, and uh, so have I, you know, it's, uh, back in 2011, we did a fight of the year, and uh, it was one hell of a fight, you know, back and forth, um, I got a victory that night, he didn't arrive fully, um, I didn't arrive fully, so we're uh, we're both there, present, 100% this coming Saturday, so, quien uh, es el más macho, how they say, we're, we're here. All right, thank you very much, Victor. As we mentioned, win the media. We appreciate all the coverage. Uh, we're going to open it up for questions momentarily. Use the hashtag on social media, 
PBC on Fox. Again, use the hashtag on social media, PBC on Fox, when discussing Saturday night's event. We go 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific, live on Fox. And Fox Deportes is now we are opening up for questioning from the media. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions at this time, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions at this time, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Our first question is going to come from Eddie Goldman from No Holds Bar. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, first question for Andre. Andre, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm, doing, I'm doing all right. Good. Uh, the, the the obvious question, what do you think is going to be different in this fight than your first fight that you had uh, five years ago when you were favored in that fight? What do you think is going to be different for you? Um, I believe this, uh, uh, this situation is going to be, uh, you know, in an incredible shape. Um um, you know, extremely focused, you know, for this one. Um, you know, like I said, man, I mean, um, you know, I don't like to speak too much, you know, in the past situations, but, but uh, you know, there was a lot of different things that went on in that camp. And, of course, just being young, just, just uh, you know, just, I mean, you're dealing with a lot. Um, you kind of take, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff for granted. So, so we're definitely, uh, uh, you know, in great shape. I had a tremendous camp. Um, I'm extremely focused, man. I, you know, like I, I mean, it's one thing to fight game. You know, I mean, uh, you know, you got to be, you know, warrior to step in that ring. So, so I don't care about this and that that they're saying about either, you know, Victor or whatever the case may be. You know, he's a fighter. You know, he steps in that ring, and at any given time. You know, you know, you can come in in there and, 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 and you know, put on the performance of his life, you know, and and show that before. So, you know, so I'm not taking anything for granted. I'm not, I'm not leaving nothing un, unturned. You know, I'm coming in in this fight, you know, 100 percent, and I'm getting ready for, for, uh, you know, for the for the best of the door to. What did you learn from the first fight that you can apply to this fight? And do you expect it to be as action-packed, you know, with all the knockdowns and everything that took place in that fight? I mean, of course, I mean, of course with a, you know, with a fight, you don't want to, you don't want to think you're, you know, you want to go in and think you want to get knocked down. You know what I'm saying? But, but you know, I definitely learned a lot. Of, I definitely learned a lot. I went through a lot of. Uh, you know, situations, you know, as well that bring me to this point. So, um, you know, I'm a lot more strong fighter now, you know, mentally, physically, all the way around. And, um, and you know, like I said, man, I, I'm with a great coach, you know, uh, I'm in Virgil Hall, and, 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 and we've just been putting all the pieces together. And, Victor, similar question. You went into the the first fight as, as an underdog. Obviously, you ended up winning that fight in, in a very exciting fight. Why do you think you're going to be able to triumph again all these years later with both the experience and the other the fights that both of you have had? Hey, we both had some, some nice wars, you know. Um, so I'm ready once again, like I was the first time. Um, and, uh, hey, we're there to put it all on the line on Saturday night. So don't miss out, man. Um, Berto's coming to kill me, and I'm coming to kill Berto. Um, that's that. Do you expect another slugfest like you had in 2011? Oh, absolutely. You know what? Berto's one hell of a fighter, and I know that. I don't. I don't take that for granted, and I've prepared for 12 hard rounds, uh, like the first time. So here we go, banging it out. Anybody want to make a prediction for this fight? Oh yeah, I'll be holding my hands in glory in the end once again. Okay, and Andre, would you like to make a prediction? Yep. Man, come for the win, that's it. You can try, you can definitely try. Okay, thank you very much. Good luck to everybody. I look forward to seeing it. 
Our next question is going to come from Andreas Hale from Ring Magazine. Please go ahead. Hey, how you guys doing today? Um, Andre, my first question is, you, you know, coming off the Floyd May- Mayweather fight, you know, what did you do to decompress before accepting the fight with Victor Ortiz? Because there was so much media and so much stuff going around at the time. Did you have to kind of step away and take a little bit of break before you recalibrated? Yeah, I mean, they had a lot going on, so I had to, uh, you know, just relax a little bit, spend time with the family, and, um, and you know, uh, you know, the fight came about, you know, definitely a fight that, uh, you know, I didn't have to take, but but I think it was, um, you know, I think it was a fight that, uh, that you know, all fans, you know, definitely wanted, and I think it's a I think it's a fight that I never wanted to get back for a while. So, uh, you know, who we to hit the to happen. And, Victor, for you, I mean, you know, when the, the Berto fight comes across, it seems like you're pretty excited for this fight to happen. Um, how how much is it about giving the fans a really exciting fight, more than just going in there and getting the W? Because a lot of fans look at this as you guys can recreate the fight of the year again. Yeah, you know, uh, like I said early on, I mean, Berto, Berto's uh, he's coming in 100, 100 mile an hour, just, you know, take my head off. And, I mean, it's the same thing on my end. I mean, we prepared fully for one another. Um, so, at this point in time, it's definitely one of those, those memorable fights. I mean, nowadays you don't really get that. You, you pay you pay what's really it's advertised as a false advertisement. You get fights that are not. I mean, I, I just turn off the TV lately. I'm just like, eh, whatever. So, you know, I know Berto's coming in uh, fully prepared, and, and so am I. Uh, he's arriving 100%, and I will too. So, you know, it's one of those exciting fights, exciting, uh, you know, 12-round matches, you know, war. Hey, Victor, what does a victory against Andre do for you in your career? I mean, how do you feel that that you know, moves you up in, in the rankings? Well, let's, let's see Saturday night. I'll let you know after that. Okay. Thanks, guys. Our next question is going to come from Brand, um, Brandy uh, Fredrickson from The Ledger in Lakeland, Florida. Please go ahead. How you guys doing? Doing well, thank you. Good. I got a question. This is a little bit for both of you guys, but, you know, the five-year difference from, from the last fight to this one, um, you know, how do you approach this fight from the perspective of what you know about the opponent and, and how you kind of, you know, go into it. Is it. How much different is it from 2011 to 2016, if, if Andre could start and then Victor after that? Um, um, it's just a fact on, uh, of course, you know, you get to, uh, well, you get to know somebody, you get to know your opponent, you get to calculate, you know, you know how he punches, how he moves, you know, and when you, you know, react so, um, you know, when it comes to, you know, after you, you know, after you fight an opponent, especially after, you know, you your first loss, like these are things that, that uh, you know, things that you can't forget. These are things that you, that you, or you continue to study, you know, once you watch tape. So, so, you know, I just think it's just the, uh, I think it's just the situation of, 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 of just, of just being prepared all the way around the, all the way around the board, you know, mentally, physically, you know, all the way around the board for it. So, so that's definitely, uh, you know, something different and just something that I didn't do in the first fight. Victor? Yes, sir? Um, same kind of thing for you. How do you look at Andre in 2016 versus how you did in, you know, 2011? Um. Hey, he's a he's a warrior, you know. He comes to fight. He's not like these uh, these guys that don't take fights. And you uh, you have another guy who's, who's hungry to, to strive, who's hungry to give me a defeat, and uh, it's not gonna happen. I've been working too hard for this. I mean, I know he is too, but bottom line is two trains colliding and crashing, and uh, you know what? I, I will be the the harder one. So at this point in time, you know, like 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 Berto said, like I say. We're going to be ready 100%, 110%. And uh, there's two, crane, two trains colliding Saturday night. All right, thank you, guys. Our next question is going to come from Lynn Satterfield with Fox. Please go ahead. 
Hey, this is uh hey uh Victor. Yes, sir. First questions for you. Um <clears throat> at the time, um, at the time you there? Yeah, I'm right here. Yeah. At the time you fought <clears throat> you fought Andre the first time, um, you were still being vilified for uh the Madonna fight and this is in spite of you having a two one and one record against uh, past or former champions who had like an 80 and two record with 59 knockouts. Um, what you said to me back then was they billed me as the next Oscar De La Hoya. Then I made one mistake in six rounds and I got sliced open by the media. They destroyed me. Um, how did you bring all of that angst and focus into your fight with Berto back then? And do you need to tap into that same angst to have a similar kind of a performance? No, you know, it's simple. It's uh, you guys, and I say you guys, not just you, I'm saying the media. The media has this weird way of working. Uh, you guys think how you guys think, and you guys write it out, and then because one person in the media writes something weird about you or bad about you, they will believe this. I know what I'm about. I know why I'm here. I know where I'm going, and that's that. It doesn't matter what, what you or... or or Jose or Mario or Demetrius or, or John say. I don't really care. I know what I'm here for. I know where I'm going, and that's that. Period. Okay. Um, Berto, so Andre, same thing. You, um, you know, you've had to listen, even, you know, in spite of what you've done since that fight, you've had to hear from, you know, you've said from Victor, from others in the media, um, you, everywhere you go, fans are saying you got to get that fight back. What happened that night? Um, I talked to Virgil Hunter the other day, and he said um, Andre hasn't come out and just said, "Man, this is personal." But I would imagine that that's in the back of his mind. Is this personal for you? Do you have to really get in there and have a sensational performance for you to be satisfied? I mean, to be realistic, man, I don't really take no uh, no fight, um, you know, personally. I mean, you know, I mean, it's a business for me. It's always been. But at the same time, you know, this is uh, this is a fight that uh, that of course um, I've always thought to myself that no matter what happens, you know, we got to make this happen again. Um, you know, it, 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 you know, it doesn't matter, you know, me coming back and, you know, beating this guy, beating that guy, and, you know, getting that mega fight, you know, with Floyd, you know, blah, 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 blah. But I feel that this is uh, still like a monkey on my back that I, that I need to go in there and try to – I need to go in there and handle. So um, I wouldn't say that it's more – yeah, I won't say it's more personal, but but I'm you know I'm taking it, I'm taking a, I'm taking it a lot more serious, and I'm and I'm extremely focused, and uh, and it feels like a job that uh, I need to try to completely get done. All right, thank you very much, and good luck in the fight. All right, thanks. And our next question comes from Jake Donovan from theboxingscene.com. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, Victor, I know you've always been, um, and rightly so, you kind of, you know, been outspoken against the media because it's kind of, you know, fair weather and its approach towards you. I just wanted to ask, with all that you have going on, like, do you feel like you even need boxing? And does that kind of drive you with each, with, uh, each fight, I guess, you know, with the perception that, you know, you fight like a guy who necessarily doesn't need to fight? You no, know, uh, I actually don't need a box. Um, I turned down two uh, two movies, uh, and I was starring, headlining on the movies as one of the main actors. I turned the I turned the movies down because I want to be back where I came from. You know, I want to make sure I conquer what I came to conquer in boxing. I'm not done with boxing. I mean, yeah, I had a couple breaks. My, my wrists were both broken, uh, jaw broken, and then you know, broken nose. I mean, stuff happens. But just because I was Fixing myself, the media wrote me off, and it wasn't me who, quote unquote, like, oh retired type stuff. Stuff happened, man, and everybody else just 
didn't even bother to to think twice about that, except for oh, Victor, Victor comes back. Oh, Victor was retired, and Victor uh, hung up the gloves. Like I never hung up anything. I mean, besides the the posters in in my room, or or maybe the pictures on my wall. Other than that, I didn't hang anything up. But uh, you guys wrote me off, so I guess it's the media thing, you know. But I've been in uh I've been in boxing and I've been a hundred mile an hour, hundred hundred percent and uh I've been I keep getting offers for movies and I keep turning them down because boxing is where I'm heading. Uh, very cool. Um I know uh going into your last fight I think it was a I think it was exactly a year layoff between fights. Um yeah. Okay, did that help you uh get into the right frame of mind for this rematch or like do you feel like this rematch is taking place at the right time for you or do you feel like it should have taken place sooner? Uh, it doesn't matter. You know, there's boxing gloves, there's a mouthpiece, there's a cup, there's a boxing ring, and uh, an opponent. So it, it is what it is. Same thing. Okay, very cool. Thank you very much. Best of luck to both you on Saturday. Thank you. And our last question comes from New Bay or Hiles. Please go ahead. Gracias. Esta pregunta es para Victor. Ya tu. Mi pregunta era precisamente cómo, uh, si se ha afectado en alguna manera tu participación en las películas, que tuviste la oportunidad de estar, y cómo te has reintegrado otra vez a tu enfoque al boxeo. Um, las películas nunca se, se meten en lo que yo hago en el boxeo, ni, ni películas en el boxeo cuando estoy boxeando, así que no se atraviesan, no se ponen en el camino de una a otra, hasta el momento yo no, no he hecho una película o nada de, de cine por ya unos cuantos meses. Um, hice, uh, me dieron dos, dos um, contratos para firmar, para hacer un, no, una película actor principal y las puse al lado porque yo quiero seguir al boxeo. Quiero coronarme campeón mundial de nuevo y uh, la única, como, vamos, con, como se voy a por, poder hacer eso es a poner las películas al lado y enfocarme el 100% en el box y es lo que he hecho ¿Te ves en un futuro cercano peleando por otro título mundial? Oh, seguro que sí, yo pensaba que esta pelea era por campeonato mundial pero no era Ahora vengo listo y voy a seguir listo para el que salga ¿Puedes traducir eso rápidamente? ¿Puedes traducir eso rápidamente? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the the que, so the question was if dealing if Victor being in part of movies has affected his focus in his boxing career. She also followed up asking if Victor had aspirations to fight for a world title. Victor, if you can translate uh, what you told the reporter. Yeah, pretty much. I just said that uh, you know I I don't let boxing interfere with acting, and I don't let acting interfere with boxing. Those two separate careers. Um, when I'm actually when I was when I was actually healing was when I was focusing on only movies. I was focusing on, on uh, TV shows and just doing that, you know. But now that my hands are healed and, and my wrist, my jaw, everything is, is proper, I was back to put my mind at, on boxing 100%. And the next question was, uh, do you see yourself time for any world titles anytime soon? I said, absolutely. That's, uh, th that's what every boxer is here for, and we're shooting for nothing less than being world champions again. Um, it just took me a little bit longer than the typical person. I actually had to put two movies aside, uh, contracts and everything ready to sign as a lead actor. And I, I said, no, I'm going to go back to boxing. So I'm here once again, and I'm ready. Excellent. At this time, we want some final comments from Victor Ortiz and Andre Berto at PBC on Fox. And Fox Support is 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific. Also, for fans that are coming to the Fight at Suburb Center in Carson, they are going quickly uh, we also have a fan festival ahead of the entire of the card, so make sure to, if you have a ticket, you can come in and meet a lot of the fighters. Uh, Leo Santa Cruz, Abner Matis, Sean Porter will all be there, so make sure to go and partake in the fan fest right now. Final comments. First, we'll start with Andre Berta. Andre, if we can have final comments from you. What's that? If we can have a final comment as we close out the media conference, if we can have a final comment from you. Oh, final comment, man. Hey, man. I've been waiting for it. Sight, John, baby. See you Saturday. 
Thank you very much, Andre. Victor, final comments. Hey, um, just uh, check it out. Once again, I'll be uh, the repeat 2011. Ready. Excellent. Thank you guys very much for partaking in the conference, the media conference call. We look forward to seeing you guys fight week. We have a lot of festivities planned, so make sure to partake in that also when talking about this Saturday's event. Use the hashtag on social media, PBC on Fox. It is PBC Live on Fox, and Fox Support is promoted by TGB Promotions. Make sure to join us at Stop Up Center. It's going to be a special night of fights with a special card in a special venue, and we look forward. If you can, come out to Stop Up Center, watch on Fox, and Fox Support this. We'll see you guys later on in the week and on Saturday at Stop Up Center for Ortiz Berto 2. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining this. Complete your own conference call email. Disconnect, and have a great day.